Hi, thanks for watching. And today I want to show you a really neat inequality that I believe every calculus student should know just because the proof is super neat. And again, it involves only calculus. So let me give you motivation. And by the way, there's no similar resemblance to either Grönland or Wonderwall. So it's as if both of them had a child and they made this Grönwall inequality. So suppose that y solves the following differential equation. y prime of t equals to g of t y of t. And the goal is somehow uh, to, uh, to write y in terms of the initial condition, y of 0, and uh, this function g. Well, it turns out we can solve this. And again, assume y is non zero, so that's okay. Then y prime over y equals to g of t. Then ln of absolute value y of t prime equals to g of t, and let's assume that y is positive, so let's just assume, remove the absolute values, and again, that's just a motivation, just to show you how to get the formula, and then I will give you the proof which doesn't involve those assumptions. Now, ln of y prime equals to g, so y ln of y t so just integrate both sides if you want from 0 to t. So we get ln of y of t minus ln of y of 0 equals to the integral from 0 to t. I want to write g of t, but because we wrote t here, it's g of sts. So in particular, ln of y of t equals to ln of y of 0 plus integral from 0 to t of g of s ds. Okay, and to get uh, um, y from that, you just exponentiate. So y of t equals to e of ln of y of 0 plus this integral, integral from 0 to t, g of s ds. And then we get y of t equals to y of 0 times e to the 0 integral from 0 t g of s ds. So if y solve this differential equation, then in fact we can solve for y simply in terms of the initial condition and our function g. And the cool thing is about uh, Grunewald's inequality is that we can do the same thing, but with inequalities. So if y satisfies what's called a differential inequality, so if y prime is less than or equal to g times y, then y of t is less than or equal to y of 0 times e to the integral from 0 to t, g of s ds. And in fact, let me state and prove this. So Grunewald I mean, It sounds like one of those Nordic Viking monsters like aha, I'm the Grunewald I'm gonna inequalize you or get something like that. So if y prime of t is less than or equal to g of t, y of t, then y of t is less than or equal to the stuff I showed before. y of 0, e from integral from 0 to t, g of s ds. And by the way, this is not in vain. Um, I guess it is in vain, uh, like the good thing, okay? So it's a good thing because I give you a really cool application after that. But no, let me prove this. So y, it just has to do with the helper function. So let z equals to this part here. So a e to the integral from 0 to t g of s ds. I think it's called the integrating factor, then notice, 
again using the Chen loop, z prime of t equals to e to the integral from 0 to t g of s ds. That's the outside function. And now let's differentiate the integral, and you get g of t. I get by the ftc. But what is that? That is just g z of t. g of t, g of t. So it's cool. This function here actually satisfies a differential equation. And moreover, what is the initial condition? z of 0 was e to the integral from 0 to 0 of blah, which is e of 0, which is 1. And lastly, notice that z is positive. So it seems I'm wasting your time, but I'm not quite wasting your time because now comes the actual proof. Consider the following quantity now. Uh, y of t over z of t, where y, again, satisfies our differential inequality, and z is this positive helper function. And let's see what this quotient, what equation this quotient satisfies. And again, I can legitimately divide by z because it's a positive quantity. And now, let's use the quotient rule. <laughs> the quotient loop, okay? <laughs> the quotient loop, uh, this becomes y prime of t, z of t, minus y of t, z prime of t, over z of t squared. Okay, z prime, again, we have this important equation. z prime satisfies this differential equation. z of t, g of t. On the other hand, what can we say about y prime? It's less or equal to this. Less or equal to g of t, y of t. And again, doesn't matter what sign g is, all that matters is that z is positive. So in fact, that's less or equal to g of t, y of t, z of t, minus y of t, z of t, g of t, over z of t squared. And now, notice this is just an interchange, you know, so in fact, those two things cancel out and you get zero. So in fact, what this tells us is that this thing is a decreasing quantity. And in particular, if a function is decreasing, it's smaller than its value at zero. So suppose you have a function f or something, and you have the value at t, then the value at zero is bigger. So y of t over z of t is less or equal to y of 0 over z of 0. But remember, z of 0 was 1. So this is y of 0. And therefore, y of t is less or equal to y of 0, z of t. And here's the cool thing. That's why in math, it's cool to define stuff. Because what was z of t was e to the integral from 0 to t g of s ds. And therefore, Grunewald's inequality has been proven. We've shown that y of t is less or equal to y of 0 e to the integral of g of s ds. Again, that's why I wanted to cover that video, because just the proof is so neat. And here's the application, as I promised. So why do you need that? For instance, to show that solutions of differential equations are unique. So consider the following scenario. So suppose you have two solutions of the following equation. y of 1 of t and y of 2 of t solve y prime equals to f of y. And important, they have the same initial condition. Suppose you have two solutions that start out from y0 and then may possibly have different trajectories. And moreover, assume the following. Assume that f is Lipschitz. 
and let's just assume global ellipses, meaning that f of x minus f of y is less or equal to L times x minus y. And it's not an unreasonable assumption because we need Lipschitz conditions to guarantee existence of solutions to ODEs. So if you have, again, this minor assumption and it's a... Uh, um, and you have two solutions that start at the same point. In fact, I want to show you that they're the same function, which needs uniqueness. So then y1 is identically equal to y2. So this picture is wrong. There can only be at most one function starting from y0 and going through. And this is global in time uniqueness, so that's kind of neat. And as I said, we need Grunwald for this. So consider the following helper function. So now we have a different one. So y1 of t minus y2 of t. That is normal, right? To show that there exists a... Um, um, to show uniqueness, it means suppose there exist two different functions, consider the difference, but we want something that's sort of differentiable and also positive, so let's just square that, and you'll see why we need that. Then, first of all, what is the value of z at zero? That's y1 of zero minus y2 of zero squared, and that is y0 minus y0 squared, and that's zero. So, z of 0 is 0. And now, let's calculate z prime and see what we get. z prime, now differentiating, that's 2 times y1 minus y2, y1 prime minus y2 prime, and that's 2 times y1 minus y2, and I'd like to remind you that y1 and y2 satisfy the differential equation so y1 prime is f of y1 minus y2 prime is f of y2. And well, let's just do a very rough estimate. It turns out that is enough. So a number is always less than or equal to its absolute value. So this is less than or equal to times absolute value of y1 minus y2 absolute value of f of y1 minus f of y2. Again, it's one of the things that it never works except here. And now, well, we're estimating the difference of f's, so we have to use the Lipschitz condition. So it's L times y1 minus y2. Again, that's by lip. Not to be confused with lip from Shameless. That's a different lip, so this is a nice one, okay. And so this is 2L times y1 t minus y2 t squared. But how cool is that? That's exactly the same thing as z. So this is 2L z of t. So what have we shown? We've shown that z prime of t it's less than or equal to 2L z of t, which is a differential inequality where g is this, g is just 2L. And because we have this differential inequality, we can use Grunwald, and that says that z of t is less than or equal to the initial value e of integral from 0 to t of 2L ds, Yes, okay. And now here's the cool thing. This is whatever, but what was z0? It's just zero. So in fact, z of t is less than or equal to zero, but because z is a square, this is greater or equal to zero. So z of t is squeezed between zero and zero, so z is identically equal to zero. And because this function is identically equal to 0, we get that y1 is identically equal to y2.
And this shows why Grenois inequality is so important. It sort of estimates functions which don't necessarily satisfy differential equations, but which satisfy differential inequalities. So this is really cool, and I hope you found that cool as well, because this is the cool club. All right, so if you like this and you want to see more analysis and differential equations in math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. And after all, here's my grand wall.